I'm Vanessa, the girl on a bike, and today I'm here to talk to you about how to get started doing motorbike maintenance. And this is not specific to just an enduro bike, any motorcycle that we're talking about. Now the reason why this is so important is because I am not a professional trained mechanic and five years ago I probably didn't even know what a torque wrench was and certainly wouldn't start taking this apart. So I want to talk to you with some advice that I've had over the last few years to get started with your own motorcycle DIY. A really important thing to think about in this is that it's okay to not know what it is that you've got to do on your bike because every single one of us started somewhere and we were all complete novices and beginners at some point in time, but that is how you learn and you go on your journey. And a really, really important thing that I love about working on my own bike is that it actually enables you to understand the mechanics, what's going on. And when you're out riding, you can hear things, feel things in a completely new way because you understand what's happening down there that's giving you that kind of result, which means when something goes wrong out on the road or out on the trails, you're also more likely to be able to fix it and ride home as opposed to having to call your mate and tell him to come save you. So that's a really big benefit of doing your own motorcycle maintenance. First thing you want to be doing is thinking about what initial first job you could have a go at and think about some of the easier, more everyday maintenance points that you have on a bike. So for example, fuel filters, air filters, oil changes, wheel bearings, maybe change your tires. They're some of the less intimidating things that you could try to start with. And then I would say, get your bike manual out. It is an absolute hive of knowledge and understanding about how your bike is working. So that's always part one of my touch point. Where do I get information? The next thing, we are lucky enough to have something called the internet. And it is full of information. So get online, get in Google, search for the job that you're wanting to do, how to change my air filter, how to change wheel bearings. And I almost guarantee there will be some kind of YouTube video or forum or discussion chat somewhere that's gonna give you all the information that you need. The other thing to do is that if you are lucky enough to know someone who knows how to do motorcycle maintenance or that particular job that you're going to do, give them a call, have a chat to them, maybe ask them if they can supervise you and give you a little bit of a, an extra eye doing the job to give you that extra bit of reassurance that you're not going to get it wrong. As you're doing all of that reading, talking to friends and planning the job that you're gonna do, make loads of notes, scribble down, make steps of what you need to do and have that at hand when you then go to do the actual job. And I find that really helpful. You then need to just give it a go. Take it slow, be really methodical and have a go at it yourself. Let's talk about some tips that I have from my own experience playing around in the garage that will help you have a successful attack at your bike maintenance. So number one is an organized, tidy garage. Have some clear spaces, get rid of the clutter and the stuff that's gonna distract you and keep your, your tools and the parts coming off the bike really well organized. Part of doing that, I often find that I get a big sheet of paper and I'll actually put the bolts down draw a patch around them on the paper and write what they are and where they've come from. And that way I've got my little map of the bike coming apart laid out so I know where they go back on. An easy one, when you do something like the engine bolts on your clutch casing, for example, if you get a piece of cardboard and puncture the holes through the cardboard, you can then put them in the right configuration, put them aside on your, on your garage, on your driveway floor, and know that when you come to put them back on, you're putting them back in the same places. Because a lot of these bolts really are millimeters different and they need to go back where, where they started from. So keep yourself organized and use paper, notes, cardboard, etc. cetera. Uh, maybe little Tupperware tubs from that local Chinese takeaway that you've had and keep everything organized. Before you actually get started though, have a think about what tools you're going to need and do you have the specialty tools that you might need for that job. So an example, if I was going to be taking my clutch apart, then a clutch basket tool is an important one to be able to get that job done. Or how about your primary sprocket? This is a special tool to enable you to grab that. And if you don't have these tools, it can make a job that is achievable 
almost unachievable. So do your research upfront on what tools you're going to need. Work out what torque wrenches you're going to need, uh, what torque settings you're going to need when you're doing things back up. If you're unsure about what I'm talking about with torque wrenches, check out my other video on why I use torque wrenches. Another trick I really like to do is actually using my camera and taking photos. It's really good if you've got wiring looms and you've got to remember which wire goes where. Save them on your phone and you've got them for memory. And all of this, I think something that's important is making sure that you've got enough time to do the job because when you can attack it and start and work your way through the process in a smooth one moment, it makes it a lot easier if you've got a brain like mine at least because if I put something down, go away and come back the next day, I often forget half of what I did. And so, yes, you'll have the photos and the notes, but actually making sure you've got enough time to do the job really can be the difference between a little bit of a panic of where that last bolt was meant to go and getting it done really smoothly. A really good routine to get yourself into is washing your bike regularly. Maybe not every single time you ride with an enduro muddy bike, yes, you should be washing it every time, but the process of meticulously washing your bike is gonna get you up close and personal, spotting that there's a little bit more play or that bolt's missing or something's come a little bit loose pushing on your brake calipers and actually physically seeing if they've got more life left in them. And that process of cleaning will give you a way better relationship with everything that's going on your bike and hopefully enable you to do preventative maintenance and spot things before they go wrong when you're out on the trails or out on the road trying to have a good time. Now to finish up, there's a couple of scenarios that you have got in relation to doing your own motorcycle maintenance. So scenario number one is that you don't give it a go and you just take your bike to the garage. You don't learn anything and it costs you money. So that's number one. The second scenario is that you try and you give it a go yourself. You work out some maintenance and you have a crack, but it doesn't go well. You hit issues, you get stuck, and you end up taking it to garage and getting them to help you out. But in this situation, you will have learned something and hopefully learn enough to give it a go successfully the second time, but you will have also spilled some money sending it to the garage. The third scenario is that you do nothing and you don't do any bike maintenance and your poor little bike will at some point have an issue and you'll be left wishing that you'd done some bike maintenance. And then the fourth scenario is that you try it yourself, you do all your research, and you nail it and you do your bike maintenance yourself and you save your money and you can use it on having a little bit more fun as opposed to paying for a garage to do it for you. So from me, Vanessa, the girl on a bike, I would really encourage you to give it a go. If I can do it, you can do it and you've got to remember that we are all just humans and none of us knew how to do it at the beginning. It's a journey, so get stuck in, don't be afraid and give your bike some love. Um, Awkward. Anyway, I'm Vanessa, the girl on a bike. Please hit subscribe if you're not already. Check out my other videos and my other socials. And thanks so much for watching. I'd love to hear what you think. What was the first bike maintenance you ever did? What's one of those really intimidating jobs that you've just wished you'd give yourself a go and try it yourself? Let me know in the comments. And now, following my new tradition, let's look at some of your recent questions on my other videos had loads of questions about the Africa Twin in relation to the GS and the T7 and which one would I want? Now that is a really hard question because I think they really are horses for courses. Each of them have their own strengths and their own weaknesses. So in a really quick nutshell, I would say the GS is an absolute Bentley on the road. Beautiful luxury. But for me, I find it a little bit intimidating in its sheer size when I go off road. Whereas the Tenere is really confidence inspiring off road and I feel like you could hit some quite technical stuff, but it doesn't quite have the same road capability as a GS. You've then got the Africa Twin, which I think seems to fit somewhere more in the middle for me. If you were wanting to have a good blast off road and on road, it kind of seems to give me the confidence in both. Um, so I would say which bike is the winner will very much depend on what you're wanting to do riding on it. A bit of a cop out, but there is no one bike for everybody and that is why there is a choice of bikes on the market. You need to think about what you want to do with it and which bike is going to suit you the most, not me. Next question on that is, how on earth did I pick up 
the massive Africa twin in that mud. Honestly, I was a little bit surprised by myself picking that up. I'm pretty chuffed. It comes down to the technique and making sure that you're using the bigger muscles on your body, not the little muscles, and lifting it up, trying to get a bit of footing in the mud. I have also been asked about other big adventure bikes and whether I will be getting some more bikes, muddy and dirty, maybe doing a bit more on road bike reviews. And the answer is probably, I would say so. I uh, enjoy riding these bikes and getting the experience of riding different bikes. So I'm not gonna say no to any of those. Anyway, keep the questions coming. Love to hear from them. Let me know about your bike maintenance and make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.